hate my life, I hate my parents, I hate school, nobody knows how dangerous I really am, what I'm capable of, they're all just sheep, mindless drones, incapable of seeing the truth, unlike me. Shadow, it's time for dinner, but mom, now. Steve Cuts is a YouTube channel owned by Steve Cuts. An English animator who has made a lot of viral hits based off criticism of society. While he's a beloved creator, especially of the Reddit crowd at one point, it seems as of recently there's been a large amount of backlash and criticism being done against him and his work. So is this bullying justified? Let's find out. Probably Steve's most iconic video was called, Are You Lost in the World Like Me? It's the animation he provided for a music video by Moby and the Void Pacific Choir. There's another version of this that has 17 million views which just has generic piano music behind it, which I find funnier, and that's the version we're going to use solely for copyright issues. As an actual song that was meant to accompany this, it's alright. I'm not sure if the lyrics are actually about what the animation is about, but I have no issues there. Besides, we're here to solely look at what Steve Cutts has done. Apparently a lot of people were shown these kinds of videos in school, which is just hilarious to me. Like a teacher just thinks, I'm finna blow their minds with this shit, and then they proceed to make memes about it. This video was supposed to have a rubber hose style of cartoons from the 30s, except those were hands drawn. This was clearly done with computers. Puppet tool, no less. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong specifically with that kind of animation. Heck, there are even examples of it on this channel. But if you're clearly trying to emulate a certain art style, you gotta be a bit more convincing than that. Seriously, Cuphead was able to get that art style down. Even the Cuphead show, which was done with computers, is still able to give the reminiscent style, even if you can tell it's not exactly the same as the techniques used in the 1930s animation. While I'm not saying Steve had to do frame by frame ink on cells type animation, I do feel like Steve Cuts kinda overdoes the whole cost cutting type of animation to an extent. For small time YouTubers, that's okay. But if you're doing a full on music video for a band that's popular enough to rake in millions of views for your animation, I'd try a little harder. Or at least not try and emulate the rubber hose style if you can't convincingly pull it off. Maybe I'm wrong and the artist asked Steve Cuts specifically for that type of style, but it doesn't change the fact that the video's animation just looks lazy and cheap for the most part. And Steve is a pretty seasoned animator. He did a couch gag on The Simpsons for fuck's sake. So people have obviously made the joke that this guy looks like Stewie Griffin, so I might as well get it over with. These systems are failing. Now I know that's also the name of the album that this music video went to, but that feels oddly out of pocket to just put in the first 30 seconds. We don't even know what systems this video is talking about, and honestly at the end of it, we may still not know. So as you can probably tell, this video is about how everyone's on their damn phones these days. Now I'm kind of an ancient cosmic entity that's existed for centuries, so maybe this is a bit ironic for me to say, but okay, Boober. Look at this poor kid who doesn't even have his own phone. Like what exactly is this kid's problem? Everyone's on their phone, but why does that affect him? So then we see some police brutality and everyone is filming it. But isn't that a good thing? Years ago we didn't have the ability to just take video of anything that happened so police could do immoral things and it would be tough to get solid evidence of it. I don't understand what this is criticizing. Is it complaining that if there were no phones that people would intervene? Because if that's what you're trying to say then I think that's bullshit. Then we see a family eating food and are all on their phones instead of talking. I guess. I mean, you just go into any restaurant and you'll clearly see people talking with each other so I don't understand this logic that people don't talk anymore. Now we have some insta-thought taking pictures of yourself while a building burns down. Because as we all know, no one has ever been apathetic towards a fire before the invention of cell phones. And to all those history buffs watching, yes, I am aware that that's not historically accurate, I was just making a joke. Why the fuck are there sentient fire trucks in the background? Now that's the real system that's failing, is there slavery in this world? 
So then we see a crowded train with everyone on their phone because what the fuck else are they supposed to do while taking the train? I don't disagree with the notions that phones have made people act antisocial in many ways, but are you trying to tell me people would want to have a conversation with a stranger in a crowded train like that? Many people wouldn't. So Stewie accidentally bumps into this guy and you know he's bad because he has a vote Trump tattoo, a confederate flag tattoo, and just the word death. He turns into a monster, and then this other lady turns into a monster. I have no idea what this means or what this has to do with anything. Then we have this other guy who also has a confederate flag. Jeez, at least give him a swastika or something and change it up a bit. And he's bothering some lady and nobody is paying attention. Not even this furry who's only wearing underpants and a bow tie. Stewie imagines himself punching the guy in the face and getting everyone's attention. But he doesn't do it. So like, isn't he just as bad as everyone else who isn't stepping in and helping? Phone's bad. Filter's bad. Oh look, a dog. What? This guy just shows up and kicks some random dog? Why? What does that have to do with anything? Does Steve Cuts just think phones make people want to kick dogs? Also, does Stewie get up and try and help the dog? No, he just sits there. So how is Stewie somehow better than everyone else in this world just because he doesn't have a phone? I get it because they're all in in big prison cells and that's why they're called cell phones now we're putting in some animal rights stuff too we're really going all out today aren't we i guess the meat industry didn't exist before phones oh wow pokemon go surely that's something that's going to stay relevant for years and won't just be seen as a fad now ah yes my favorite brand of ketchup these systems are failing Don't worry, ugly people, she only picked him because he has a great personality. So now Stewie is just bothering random people? If you ask me, the real problem is Stewie, not everyone else. Just a random troll face guy. Now I get this is supposed to be a commentary on cringe culture and cyberbullying, and we have history with that subject. I honestly wonder if Steve Cutts realizes that not everyone lives in a massive populated metropolitan area. Earth is not Corazon, buddy. This video really needs to make up its mind on what it wants to be about. It's like Steve Cutts has a bad attention span. Probably from being on his phone all the time. Some woman now tries to commit suicide. Oh no, he has that one tear down his face. That's how you know how bad things are. And again, I didn't see you try to prevent her death, Stewie. Then everyone just walks off the cliff and dies. Does the video offer any solutions or ways to fix this problem the systems are in? No, it's just pointing at things that are bad. And most of people are aware these things are bad, so it's essentially saying what's been said already. Overall, this video was pretty terrible, and it's understandable why people clown on it. I'm sure the intention was to make something deep and thought-provoking, but really, what does this video have to say other than phones and technology are bad? Nothing. It's just pointing out issues without making any attempt to find a positive for solution. I would say Ideas by Big Lazy Robot VFX does the whole cell phone satire better. At least the animation is actually pretty impressive. But don't worry, Stevie Boy has more videos for us. Next one is called Man. Why exactly did he pick 500,000 years ago? In terms of when close to human species first appeared, it can be traced as early as 2 million years ago with the Homo habilis and later Homo erectus. <laughs> erectus. Joe, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to question the scientific accuracy on a YouTube video from 2012. Anyways, in terms of modern humans, as in the Homo sapien, they first appeared like 300,000 years ago. So 500,000 years ago would refer to more archaic humans like Neanderthals. I think he got more satisfaction out of it than he should have. As you can see, he T-poses for dominance. So this video is kind of dumb as well. The video is basically about a guy who kills a bunch of animals and pollutes the world. Obviously one man didn't do all this, but he's meant to be a stand-in for humanity as a whole. I think the biggest problem with this video is that it just kind of holds everyone accountable, which is unfair. 
yeah, the environment has been destroyed by humanity, but I don't think it's fair to act like, look what we did, when a lot of this pollution was caused by powerful and wealthy individuals who are not only responsible for the giant factories and meat industries and other aspects of environmental harm, but they also create an infrastructure that forces the average person to partake in environmental damage. Take for example where I live a car is basically a necessity. Sure, you could walk to the convenience store and get a jug of milk, but that would probably take you like 45 minutes up and back, so it will probably take all 5 minutes of driving. There's also no sidewalk most of the time and busy highways that are impossible to cross unless you have a death sentence. Everything is built too far away from everything, where walking just isn't practical and taking a bike is just dangerous from the busy roads. Yeah, I get the cars are bad for the environment, but what the hell do you want me to do? I didn't build the roads. I didn't design the town to be impossible to walk in. A car is a necessity in many places where it just may not be a necessarily have had to be a necessity. So to go on about how we're ruining the world, fuck off. There's also a lot of good that humanity has done for the environment, like recycling, repurposing waste into something new, animal conservation. You may say the harm humans have done has outweighed the good, and I can't say I disagree, but still, it's not like humanity ever only wanted to take and destroy the world. Not every human is like that. The video doesn't offer a solution again, and it really doesn't offer anything unique to think about. I mean, I hardly imagine 90% of the viewers have had no idea about bad environmental impacts the humans have had only until watching Man by Steve Cutts. But we obviously know how all this works, so what point are you trying to make here? The video also ends with aliens showing up and stomping the man to death. I have no idea what that means or what that has to do with anything, but whatever. I honestly think the best positive example I could use for a similar type of video to this is Beasts by Treats for Beasts. Even though the video is just an MS Paint animation, I actually feel like there's an overall better video here. For one thing, the video explicitly calls out the institutions like organized religions, education, entertainment. You may disagree, but the video isn't necessarily blaming you, the viewer. I guess the closest is the beast that bears the teeth, but overall this video has a lot more to say about powerful aspects of society as opposed to just saying we all equally suck. The video is also creative, I mean, I don't think you've ever seen anything like these with these green karma beings. Meanwhile, Steve Cuts just reminds me of every boomer comic you find online these days. I think the ending and in general the whole video concept is a bit more to infer as opposed to man. I think man, you just from the thumbnail and the name, you could probably tell what it's about. At least with Beast, you may have to watch it for at least a few seconds before you kind of get what it's going at. Also, I think the ending is better. I mean, the ending in man is just aliens showing up and like, what the hell does that even mean? With beasts, we see the earth changing colors. But what does that mean? What does that represent? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? It's really your own interpretation of what this all means. Obviously, everyone can figure out that the beasts are meant to represent people, but I think there's a lot to this video that you could also think about, while well, man really doesn't give you much to think about outside of what it's explicitly showing you on screen. I know some people may say beast is basically cut from the same branch as Steve Cut videos, but I think there's generally more creativity and a long-lasting appeal to this video. Next up we have happiness which is about humans, but they're rats. I guess it's better than making them sheep or ants or whatever, but in terms of actual quality, the animation isn't bad, especially this Disney inspired part. I guess the main problem I have is what exactly is this animation trying to say? It shows corporate cities and different vices people have, but I don't exactly understand what the underlying message is here. Now, I've been hard on Steve Cutts so far, but I actually do enjoy some of his animations. His latest one, A Brief Disagreement, is actually pretty impressively animated and fun to watch. It feels more like a mockery of the nature of a war as opposed to being preachy, although I do question uh, the way he's painting all wars kind of being equally worthless. Like, I think there's a difference between maybe World War One and World War Two, for example, and terms of how important how necessary it was to engage in those wars. I don't necessarily think the allies trying to stop the Nazis was the same as barbarians throwing rocks at each other if you get what I'm trying to say. Overall it was a fun video to watch and I do think Steve Cutts has talent and I'd recommend him to mainly take his time and try to work more with frame by frame animation as that seems to be his strength. 
Also, he should try and make more funny videos rather than ones that just try and feel intellectual. He can have a deep message and all, but I think people would stop clowning on him if he would just take himself less seriously. That being said, people were eating this shit up back in the day, and the whole so deep memes that you see today were not really a thing back in 2012. People actually did take this stuff seriously, so I think many aspects, Steve Cutts' older animations are more of a product of their time. I think he's alright more for the most part, with a few bad videos, but they're not the worst things I've seen. They're certainly better than storytime animations at the very least. Yeah, I said it. Bite me.